Hey everyone, I got some new silicon from Espressif. The first one is the ESP32 S2 FH4. This chip is just like the current ESP32 S2, but it also includes 4 megabytes of flash inside the chip, so you don't have to put a flash chip on. Now there is already an FH2 version that's out in production. It's got 2 megabytes of flash, but I'm more keen on working with a 4 megabyte flash chip, which is the same as what I've got on my tiny Pico. The other chip I got is this one. This is the ESP32 S2 FN4R2. That's the final production chip name, which also has another name, but the actual labels on my chips are the ESP32 S2 FR-01, which was their designation while they're in samples. This particular chip has four megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PSRAM inside. So that means you need no external RAM and no external flash for this chip. Now those of you that have got one of my Feather S2 boards will know that there's both a flash and a PS RAM chip on it. And both of those chips take up quite a considerable amount of space. You can get both of these chips in slightly smaller packages, but they're also considerably more expensive. This chip here, although it's much smaller flash and smaller RAM than what I've got on my Feather S2, my Feather S2 has 16 megabytes of flash and 8 megabytes of PS RAM. There's only got 4 and 2, but I eliminate all of that space. So all I need is the chip and a crystal. So, this is the chip I've been waiting for. This is the one I'm really keen on. I would love to use this on a product. If only I could think of something to use it on. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. I know, why don't I open this up and maybe I can put one on this little board. This is my prototype of my tiny S2. That's right, I'm now going to have a tiny Pico and a tiny S2. I'll have the S2 chip on here with the crystal. I don't need to put any external RAM or flash on it. So, let's put one of these together, put one of these on, and see if it works.
Okay, so that went pretty well. I'm quite happy with that. Reflow looked good. You might notice that there is a matching network over here. You would have seen that under the microscope. And I've just got a zero ohm resistor in here right now. I need to do some matching on the VNA. But for now, I've just got a zero ohm just to make sure that the antenna connection goes through to the chip. Now, the board's got USB-C and it's got this little mouse body thing at the end, just underneath a breakaway. This is what I'm doing now with my USB-C connectors. So I can just snap it away. Gone. Now there's a bit of an overhang for the USB. Before I do anything, before I power it up, I'm going to beep it out and make sure that there are no shorts. So I'll get my DMM over here. Turn it on. Make sure that the signal. Great. Now I'm going to make sure that the th ground, there's a ground pin over here, and 3.3, .3. no short. 5 volts, no short, battery, nope, ground to ground, good, reset, no short, anything between 5 volts and 3.3, .3? no, between battery and 5 volts, no, battery 3.3, .3? no, okay, so, no shorts on the board that I'm aware of, the reflow around the QFN looked really good, so I don't think there's any IO shorts in there. So I guess it's time to power it up and see what happens. Okay, I actually got myself one of these fancy USB meters. It's got USB-C in and out as well as micro B and A. So I'm going to run it through here so I can see how much current is being drawn when I plug it in. Here we go. Well, power light comes on, charge LED is flashing. And as we can see here, we're getting 13 milliamps, which I guess could be correct with nothing on the chip. I've never powered up one of these chips, but no shorts. It's not pulling too much current. So that's pretty cool. Now it's a matter of seeing if we can bring it up. So to do that, I have made a custom board file for CircuitPython for this. I haven't tried it yet because <laughs> this is the first time I put this on. It's a different configuration to my Feather S2. It's a different configuration to any other chip that's out there right now other than possibly the S2 Rover, which comes with two megabytes of PS RAM. So I've based my board layout for CircuitPython on one of the Rover S2 board definitions, and hopefully that'll work. Let's find out. Over here, I've got a list of all of the volumes mounted on my machine right now. There's no CircuitPython tiny USB. There's just my Macintosh hard drive network mount and uh, two other drives, Xeon Unexpected Maker, I'm sorry I can't make these icons any bigger. I've got two terminal windows open. This top one, it shows that I'm in my Tiny UF2 ports folder. So I've already compiled the Tiny UF2 firmware. I'm about to flash it on the board with this command here. But before I do, this terminal window down the bottom is actually viewing UART0. So as you can see here, I've got some extra wires connected to the S2. I've got ground, TX and RX. They are UART0 and they don't actually get piped out via the native USB on the S2 chip. So I've got another little CP2104 little program of mine that's connected to there and that's being pushed into this window over here. So you'll see output from UART0 as I do things. So if I put the board into download mode, so I push boot, then hold that reset and let go of boot. You can see here it says waiting for download in this terminal window and now if I flash the board hopefully right okay error all right this error is fine so this is because idf.py can't make the board reset itself at the end so it did flash it right hash data verified is correct it's leaving and it tries to do a hard reset but it can't says here that I can't do it, you can suppress this error if you want to. So that means I need to push the reset button. So when I push the reset button, hopefully we will see the RGB LED over here go green, it may flash red first, and we should see a whole lot of output from that console. Okay, there we go. It flashed red, now it's flashed green. We saw a whole lot of output from the console, and look at that, we have a tiny S2 boot drive that has appeared. If I go into that, you can see that there is Info uf2.txt, double click on that. And inside that is 
Tiny UF2 bootloader. What version? The IDF version. Model unexpected maker Tiny S2. Board ID unexpected maker Tiny S2. So we've now got a mass storage device mounted called Tiny S2 boot. So I'm going to now copy the CircuitPython firmware over. And again, I've already compiled the firmware, but I have not installed it. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so here is a finder window. I'm inside my ESP32 S2 ports in CircuitPython. And you can see here I've got some firmware that I've just built today. I've also got some Feather S2 firmware. So what I'm looking for is the firmware.uf2, which is this file here. And I should be able to just drag it onto that and it should copy and hopefully work. So we should get a little dialog that pops up copying. We do. You can see the lights flashing, it means it's copying. And when it finishes, it boots. Okay, we saw a whole lot of console stuff come. And we've got CircuitPy. So we now have a CircuitPython drive. And boot.out has opened up a file that says Adafruit CircuitPython 6.2.0 beta 1 Tiny S2 with ESP32 S2. Let's not do anything right now because there's no code on here. I should be able to copy some files over. So I've already prepared a tinyS2.py and a code.py, which is the same as my Feather S2 ones. But this is using an SK style RGB LED uh, 1515 instead of an APA 102. So I had to modify the files. But if I copy these over into here, it should copy and then start. And there we go. We've got a cycling RGB LED. Look at that. How cool. So I should be able to also go right into the REPL now. So I should be able to go screen slash dev slash cu.usb I don't know which one it is. Modem. That's the ID. 115200. Let's make this a bit bigger. You can see there, code running. I should be able to hit enter. And now I'm in the REPL. So import code, which is just the same as doing a reset. So two megabytes of RAM. There's almost a megabyte of flash free. And it's doing the NeoPixel stuff. It's working. So Tiny S2, which is obviously fully compatible with my Tiny Pico in terms of footprint but also has the IO0, RX, and TX broken out, but the rest of it is all compatible. All the spy pins, I squared C pins, where the DACs are, everything else. It's working. How exciting. A second board in my Tiny Pico form factor lineup. The S2 was a perfect fit for my Tiny Pico form factor, but I had to wait until a specific release of chip that would actually fit. I definitely want to go double sided board again and even if I did, putting the flash and the RAM on the back would have made it super bulky. So now that Espressive are uh, soon to have silicon that has both flash and PS RAM inside it, it's opened up the ability for me to do this. Now, this is still just sample silicon. It's at least a month or so away until production starts for the silicon, assuming it starts on time. So. You won't see a Tiny S2 production board for a little while still, but I'm going to keep debugging this. So far, everything is working on it. Once I've everything on here, I'll start playing around with using it on all of my shields and make sure all of that works so I can be ready with production boards as soon as silicon is available. Wow, that was uh, super cool, and I'm really glad it worked. Now, the firmware did take a bit of wrangling to get working. Uh, thanks very much to Scott from Adafruit and to Angus from Espressive. They both helped me sort out some um, SPI RAM issues. But yeah, super, super exciting. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click the subscribe button and make sure you click the alarm bell to be notified when I've got new videos coming out. To my patrons, you're awesome. Thank you so much. It's your generosity that allows me to tinker with stuff like this. So it's greatly appreciated. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.